is only one God, and his name is death. And there is only one thing we say to death. Not today. Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James, hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back as we continue our Scorched Earth journey and complete the arc. Now between episodes I've been busy, I've built this little platform up here and the idea is I wanted to get the pipework all hidden, I want to get a greenhouse up and running and I've managed to get the stone pipework to come up through this foundation, up through the waterfall and the whole of this top level should be irrigated. It goes quite far back, I've had to put some walls up and I'm planning to put the greenhouse just here. I'm not sure if the pipe works going to stretch back to them back ones. It should do. It should be close enough to irrigate everything. So I need to gather some crystal in order to make the greenhouse so I'm a little way off doing that. But before we can use the kibble we need some dinos that can craft the kibble. So we're going to go and look for a couple of low level Uteranus. As you can see, I still haven't got any points in fortitude and I need to make that Rockwell Mind Wipe Tonic. In order to do that, I need mushrooms and rare flowers. Now, I've got a few mushrooms, that's not a problem. I've gathered a few, a little bit of crystal already. And as you do grab a crystal, you come across the rare mushrooms. So I'm not far off 20 of them, but it's the rare flowers. And the only way I've found them is using these whip to gather berries so maybe if I can get a berry hunter maybe I'll get more rare flowers. I've looked on the wiki and some people say the purple flowers give back rare flowers but I've only managed to find a few so far on my gathering journey so I really need to find the rare flowers so if anybody has got any tips on how to come across them on scorched earth please write down below I need to go out and farm at least 20 of them and if there is a specific plant that I need to be looking for in order to do that, yeah, please give me a shout down below. What else we was going to do today is I'm going to head out now to the Red Obelisk and I'm going to craft a couple of tech cryopods. This is going to make taming things a lot easier. And I have had a couple of comments on the island map playthrough as to how I managed to get my dinos across to Herbie Island. Well, we use the cryopods, you don't have to complete the game in order to get the tech cryopods. Only requires level 50 and a few materials which I'm carrying with me now. Some crystal polymer, oil, fibre, some metal ingots. And you can craft cry cryopods, it just makes storing your dinos and transferring them so much easier. So you don't need the boat as I did. But um, the cryopods are definitely a must have. So since they've introduced that, it's much easier. So look, I'm just trying these purple flowers and I don't tend to get any rare flowers back from them. So I've tried all sorts. So I don't know if there's a Pacific dino that might have a better chance of gathering them or if there's something I'm looking for. But it's going to be a slow process to do this mind wipe tonic if I can't use them. And I absolutely need to do it before the end of the playthrough. And I totally forgot to bring the metal ingots back to the obelisk. So I've just had to go back to base and grab a couple of ingots. And just back there I saw a low level male Uteranus. I knew it would be low level because it was one of the event coloured ones. A great big green one. So there we go. So cryopods. Available at level 51, and this makes transporting everything a lot easier. So I'm going to craft a couple of these up. They last for 30 days. They'll last double that in the fridge. And if you've got the cryo fridge, then they last infinitely and charge at the same rate that they would be depleting. So it takes a little while for them to charge up, but you can craft that as well at any obelisk 
and it doesn't need tech generators to run on it so it's definitely worth getting these cryopods you really do need them now not only that they they free up space on the server they just make things run a lot smoother as well so if you find you've got a lot of dinos around your base you can stick them in the fridge and that frees up a lot of memory so just at that mountain in the distance I saw one of the event coloured low level Uteranuses. I'm going to see if I can get a good vantage point and take it out and see what we can do. Well it appears to be stuck now so it won't take many more to knock it out. Like I say I have got the materials to make a taming pen but it's not always necessary when they're such a low level. It can knock them out a lot easier. So I think it's stuck. And there it goes. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Now, I did stick Devil away because if the Uteranus did fear roar, you stand the chance of your bird scarpering and running away. If you're not on it, that's a bad day. So, we'll just get this Uteranus tamed up. It doesn't matter what I'm using, really. I'll probably go and find some prime meat. There's some Argentavises over there just to tame it quicker, but I'm not bothered about the levels on this. It's purely for our kibble farm. So we just need to find ourselves a low level female and we can use fertilized eggs for kibble. So we don't need to tame loads of them up or breed them. So this is the hidden crystal cave. It's absolutely packed tight with crystal. It's just south of the red obelisk. And I think we need to gamma up. You guys probably can't see this. And Devil's got a level, so a bit more melee damage. And have I got a level? Wow. Okay. Let's just gamma up. So there's plenty of crystal and obsidian in this cave. I'm going to take as much back as I can. Probably get enough rare mushrooms as well. Look, there's a couple more there. So it's going to be the flowers that I'm struggling for. I need that because just one point in fortitude is not going to be enough. And we can drop this stuff. I don't need it. So this is a great little cave and it is absolutely packed with crystal. For now I'm just going to pump that point into uh, Fortitude so it is slow going for getting points. You really do level slowly. Okay. Well I'll just gather up as much crystal as I get. It's probably going to be a few trips yet and uh, then I can think about getting the greenhouse up and running. I'll grab everything I can find out here. There's loads more down below on the bottom of this hidden little cave here. It's definitely my favorite spot for crystal. Okay, I've just had to go back to base and grab a few more Trank arrows. Didn't have quite enough, but I found this level 20 female and that'll do nicely. I'm just gonna put devil away. Like I said before, I don't want to get fear roared. Now, if I was going for a max level Uteranus, I would have to make a taming pen. Otherwise, when it starts torpor running, it's really hard to knock out. But something that's low level, I find often if you can just kite it round to where you can get the high ground, you generally don't have too hard a time. That being said, it'll probably happen this time. So I'm also going to need to find a honeybee. That's probably going to have to wait until next time. We'll get a greenhouse built and do another bee tame. Right, where's it gone? You're going to run up here. That's going to go for the kangaroo. Should 
be able to get some hits here. Hopefully it gets stuck over there. Doesn't seem to notice me firing darts at it at the moment. So, now I could breed a few more Uteranuses and have plenty of them laying around for eggs. But I'll probably just use fertilised eggs. Yeah, I think it's got a little bit stuck behind that rock for the time being. But yeah, if you're going for a higher level, then it might be an idea to have a taming pen. I do have a taming pen with me, but in this case, I don't think so. And here's me saying that this would be easy. This thing's been torpor running for ages. I've just put devil on follow because if it comes back and it loses its torpidity running, but I don't think so because it's, it's done it a few times now. It's literally about to drop. This is the disadvantage of not using the taming pen. If it gets out into the open, then you have to chase it about. But if it does decide to come at me, I've got Devil on passive, so I'll be able to jump straight onto its back. I'll probably lose my armour. I should. There we go. It's okay. It didn't lose its torpidity. Okay. So that's a second Uteranus. Now the eggs are not going to be a problem. Let's go and check out what this green drop is. I don't usually, but quite often there's something in the green drops that are useful. Mm, not this time. Okay, look. So here's some different types of red flowers. Now these are the ones, I think, that according to a forum I was reading, somebody was saying you can get back rare flowers from them, but I'm just having no luck at all. So yeah, if anybody's got a great method of getting rare flowers on Scorched, let me know. Shouldn't be far off now. There we go. So we got our female. So one of the other things that we're going to need to get our greenhouse up and running is fertilizer. And seeing as we're all the way over towards the red obelisk, we've got our RG. We can just pop across into the desert and go and find ourselves a dung beetle. So let's just go and have a hunt out in the desert, see what we can find. There's usually plenty of them. Okay, so this is a really interesting landmark on the Scorched Earth map. And I really don't know how it fits into the lore of Scorched Earth. As some of you probably know, I've been doing a reading of the notes and I am going to be doing Scorched Earth's dossier notes. It's just that I need them for leveling up my dinos throughout the playthrough. But as we read through the Scorched Earth notes, you'll find that there's a mention of the lost city of Nasty. Now this is not that landmark. I know where that is out in the desert, but that is actually quite far away from here. There is no mention of any Colosseum within the notes. And as you can see, somebody built this. There's a great big statue of the Manticore here. And this giant Colosseum and arena, it must have been put here for a purpose. I'd love to know what. In fact, if we come down here, we can see that this little gate here with the chains that have been broken, that's the Manticore symbol on the front of it. So, oh, just opened up a dossier. No, I didn't mean to open that. I do need to keep them to level up the dinos. Uh, they are really handy. That's why I'm not doing the note read just yet. But as you can see, this area was definitely designed for something. Now, I would have thought that you would have entered the fight via here, maybe rather than one of the obelisks. But unfortunately, there is no ascension, as you know, on Scorched Earth. And as far as I know, there's not going to be. I know that I read a tweet recently, in fact I'll pull it up on the screen, it was from Cedric who's the lead community manager on the Ark Survival Evolved project and he said something to the effect of, 
I get it. I know why you want to get an ascension on Scorched Earth. It's not going to happen, but tell me, why would you prefer that over something that adds a function to the game? And, well, Cedric, I'll, I'll tell you why I personally would like to see this. You created a world with an in-depth lore where your creativity and imagination allowed us to travel through these arcs and follow the journey of the survivors who first discovered them. So it's not that we want to unbalance the game by adding more levels or that you create more tech engrams for defeating the Manticore. It's that there's a transition, something that we can follow as a player and find a way to aberration as both Helena and Rockwell did. And if all you added was a simple door or a walkthrough in the Lost City, it would make many of us happy. But that's what I'm trying to say is that we're trying to follow the story. And more often than not, in both games and films, it's getting forgotten about. But it really is something that adds so much. And it's certainly something that's immersed a lot of people in my journey through the arc is following the story. So. I would like to see it completed. It's to my understanding that Helena and Rockwell exited the map before the scar opened, before the dragons broke out, and it happened in a different way. All I would say is that I'd be happy with a little white door like the Matrix that brings us through to Aberration, even if we didn't get an overseer, even if it wasn't that. It's just some way that we could follow the survivors. That's it. Maybe a cutscene. But hey, that's my two cents. Okay. So let's tame ourselves a bug. And it's going to be quite easy. In fact, if I just chuck one of these Uteranuses down, it should need to poop straight away. Let's get this. And there we go we can tame ourselves a dung beetle. So I'm going to have to go back to the hidden crystal cave, get a load more crystal. You've been stuck. And next time I'm going to be putting up a greenhouse. Hopefully everything's going to be irrigated and we're going to have to go and find and tame a bee. There we go. And I guess the dung beetle for now can just wait inside the adobe build. Which again is not finished, it's really quite expensive. This whole... I'm going to have to put this Uteranus away. This whole area, it took me ages to be able to craft up uh, the adobe foundations here. I probably could have got away with stone, but... I'm just trying to build it up and hide the pipes. I'm quite happy with what I did, but it's taken ages to be able to do. And like I say, being that the Dodicarus doesn't take any weight reduction on sand, it's actually quite a long process in order to craft it, especially going out to get the cactus. But I'm getting there slowly but surely. Okay, so this should be all right to just hang out in here and We'll get some fertilizer crafting up. Just got to put that on Wanda. Add some poop into its inventory and that just naturally creates fertilizer over time. And that about wraps it up for this week's episode of Complete Scorched Earth. We've managed to get a couple of Uteranuses, so our kibble farm is going to be up and running soon. And soon enough, exceptional kibble's not going to be a problem. However, we are going to need to get all of the tiers of kibble because we're running this unmodded, so it's not like we can plop the nanny down and just have that imprint our dinos for us. We're going to need all of the tiers of kibble just in case one of the creatures asks for it. That way we've got the strongest army we can possibly get when we come to fight the Manticore. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you're enjoying the art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.